Okay, I think we've got us going. You know, with, you get what you pay for with your help. Uh, this is this is Judge Rusty Johnston here, along with Adam Strange. We're the Armed Alabama team, and we thought it was high time to have a program about this. Uh, oh, I don't know what would you call it, hysteria, hysteria. that has That's developed exactly around the uh, Chai Com, Communist Chinese coronavirus. And uh, we wanted to go into a couple of things. One, actions, I think, the government, and this is all levels. You know, we usually trash the federal government. This is, in all levels of the government, have taken heavy-handed tactics uh, and how they've destroyed the economy. Plus, just some tips for new gun owners on maybe, you know, how to get acquainted with your gun without having instructions and some other things like that. But... Uh, First thing I want to ask you, Adam, is uh, in this state, at least, we don't have the problem with firearms uh, no. closing down, which no. they've done in a lot of states and they have yeah. loved it. Yeah, part of, part of this problem is is uh, with this essential and non-essential uh, business staying open or closed, you have state or local authorities. Or and you know, I feel like I never worked at a non-essential business from when I got out of high no, school. Let me I wouldn't have gone in. <laughs> let me tell you something. You know, if your household depends on your income, then you have an essential job. Darn you, right. Or you have an essential business. If your business is your livelihood, and as far as I'm concerned, your business is an essential business. Who has the right to be able to come in and say... It's naming winners and losers. Absolutely. To say... Your business is not essential. Let's say, but, but the thing about it is, Judge, is the same people, and this happened on Facebook. And, you know, you have people that's come on making comments, or you have government officials. They're saying that these businesses need to be closed because it's not essential. And, but the same people still have their jobs. Well, they're still getting that's their funny money check. You, it's funny you say that. As a former government employee myself, the people doing all the ordering of things closing and bullying people. They all have their jobs, none of their employees, Correct. and there ought to be at least a rolling uh, layoff for a couple of weeks uh, while they're doing all this. Because what people don't understand, let's say I'm in a plant that makes rubber gaskets. That seems non-essential until you find out those rubber gaskets go in some device that you, you know, it's unbelievable. I think part of the problem, a couple of problems, one, fortunately, we're not used to seeing death anymore. I mean, you know, Unfortunately, I have had two people, three people die in my hands, but most people don't see death anymore. So it's such a horrible deal. And we have so many people in the country that are either atheist, agnostic, or not religious. They don't believe in an afterlife. They don't believe that there's heaven, a paradise awaits them. So like the Russian or like the communists were, they're scared to death to die. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not wanting to die, but no, if no. I do, I'll be in a better place. And Adam, I, how many times have you heard some idiot say this is the worst health crisis we've ever faced? I, I should have brought the book in here. I studied the uh, Black Death in Europe in 1358. What, fifty percent of the population died that they know of. I mean, how is it getting worse than that? Or if you were an American Indian, 90% died from smallpox. Yeah, yeah. Or something even more recent, uh, the, uh, the the 1918 and 1919 I cleaned, Spanish flu. I cleaned two gravestones over the weekend of my relatives that both died in that flu epidemic. Millions and millions of Americans, I think it was like 50, I don't want to quote anything to get it wrong just off the top of my head, but there was millions that died. I think uh, if just the same America, amount, because there were 100 million now, I think it would be something like two million dying yeah, now. Yeah. But you know, even back then, people, yeah, you, know, you died at home. People were used to that kind of thing. And we have become maybe very fortunately so insulated from death that I heard that idiot Governor Cuomo said, uh, you, uh, let's say you can't put a price on human life. And I thought, well, you can't. Well, it's funny, actuaries with life insurance companies do all do, the time. Every day. And it's funny, when we firebombed Tokyo before the H-bomb hit, we killed 100,000 people in one night. So, you know, we, we do that all the time. And when Sherman bombarded Atlanta for 10 days and aimed at the houses, 
He didn't give a darn about human life. Well, going back to your original point, uh, as far as business closing, so many municipalities across this nation use this opportunity to close gun shops. Yep. Right off the bat, deemed them unessential and closed them, and or stated that uh, by, because of public fear or of lack of knowledge of firearms, because there was a surge, automatic, there was a surge on buying firearms. And that was the immediate thing to do was to close those firearm shops down, those gun shops down, like in California or New Jersey. And do you, do, is there an amendment the to country. the Constitution that says ga buying gas, gasoline is an inalienable right? No, but gasoline stations are open, aren't they? Yep. yep. Gun stores are buying, purchasing guns and ammunition is the only area of commerce is protected by the Constitution. And those are the ones that's been the one they, that they're just dying to shut down. Yeah, it, it, it is really... So, we we are in agreement that this uh, pandemic, if you will, um, is being blown out of proportion. It is, it is well, bad. Wait, let's, the the let's virus bring, is bad. Let's bring up what we did before we talk. It's the same mentality, though, that... And I, 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 one of our governors around 2000, 2001... There was a hurricane just coming into the Gulf. He ordered the complete evacuation of Mobile County. So if you were in Citronelle, you know, 158 feet above sea level, 45 miles inland, and nobody did it. But it's that, it's that, they don't have the power to do it anyway, but it's, it's that pushing people around. You're too stupid to evaluate where you live. Is it a safe place? Is it not? It's like this. Now, you know, if you were, let's say if I was a heart transplant patient and taking immunosuppressant drugs, sure, you ought to be very careful with something like this. But just, I, I, I'm really amazed uh, at, at all of this. Uh, well, the thing is, is, you know, every life is precious to someone. You know? Sure. Everybody loves well, someone. Most, most lives. Yeah. There are few that but, uh, but just perspective-wise, I think the... Um, the CDC not too long ago just announced that uh, their flu virus rates for United States on this last flu season, 50, meaning, 60, meaning, thousand, right? meaning October, I think it was October 1st to March 21st, October 1st, 2019 to, to March 21st of 2021, make sure I get this right, that there were 62,000 Americans died from the flu there were 720 some odd thousand hospitalizations, 54 million people contracted the flu virus. And yet we but survived. We did survive, but yet we never heard that the healthcare system was overwhelmed or overburdened or couldn't cope. And this is the same CDC that screwed up their test. They wanted their own to, they, they have they've made 10 or 12 screw ups plus aid in the World Health Organization. Don't We've got an Ethiopian communist who's not a medical doctor who was put in there by the communist Chinese who said as late as three weeks ago there was no uh, spread person to person. I mean, it's really it's really unbelievable. I, I honestly believe the world, the world Health Organization is beholden to China. It is, and we it, pay it, most of the bills for them. And we pay 50% of the bills to the to the 50 percent of money uh, for the World Health Organization come from the United States. Speaking of China, now that we brought it yeah. up, let's go ahead and talk, talk about it, to where this coronavirus comes from. And I'm not, I'm just a lay person, uh, but I am a consumer of information. And these, this coronavirus, as well as SARS and many other coronavirus viruses, uh, come from Chinese wet markets. And if you're not familiar with... And CDC with, predicted five years ago that we were going to be hit by a pandemic from one of these. Well, all you have to do is just, you know, do some research. If you're on in the, the least an animal rights activist, I saw tiger cubs in cages ready to be slaughtered and served as food. Yep, yep. It, it, and the thing about it is, uh, with, with these wet markets, you have lots of different animals. You have bats, you have lots of different uh, felines. Unsanitary. Uh, Armadillo-like creatures. I can't remember their oh, name. Oh, I saw the porcupines. It was horrible. I mean, it's just crazy the number of uh, animals. But they stack these animals in cages on top of yeah. each other. 
So the urine and feces from one animal falls down below onto the next animal. So if there is some type of contagion that the animal has, sure. it is transmitted to the animal down below. So, oh. but it also takes a a a, 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 a genetic mutation or whatever yeah. within the virus to be able to jump. So, but this particular virus, I think the last one was SARS in 2015 that really hit yep. uh, South Korea. Uh, this one uh, jumped from a bat to an armadillo-like creature, and I, I swear, well, I can't, we think I can't, it and, did. Yeah, that's what they're speculating now. Uh, and and then it jumped from that creature uh, to uh, to uh, humans. Uh, you know what I love Wuhan, though, about uh, wet market. You know when when rumor kind of came out because this place is I think two miles from the their level four bio research the, the only. The only, level, one. the only level four bio research in China. The Chinese in the next week said the U.S. military created it. <laughs> okay, that's like seeing a dead woman in the middle of the street. You don't know whether she died of a heart attack, been run over, murdered. Crowd gathers around, the police show up. A man raises his hand and said, I didn't murder her. How do we know she's been murdered? Just like they've admitted that it was manufactured by saying that. Yeah, yeah. So, to this, to my point, and what I'm get driving at here, um, yeah, it's a pretty bad virus, but I definitely it doesn't warrant the kind of hysteria. It doesn't warrant a that, great depression. That's exactly right. And with that depression, you have the depression of, of people who've lost their jobs, lost their business. Suicide rates are go up. So just last Don't year, we have something like forty thousand suicides yes, a year. Yes, over that, it's like yeah. forty-eight thousand yeah. suicides a year. So. Um, one of the uh, people I seen on TV talking heads was the uh, Knox, the mayor of Knoxville, formerly known as uh, I think as uh, Kane. He's a WWF wrestler. And <laughs> yeah, he, is, yeah, right. he is now the mayor of Knoxville. This guy is great, and he was the first person uh, in the uh, political arena that came out and said, "Hey, we have already started seeing a spike in suicides. We have got to do something different. We can." We Isn't this like being on a hurricane warning for weeks and weeks and weeks? But it's the whole country. Yeah, folks. and everybody's... The whole world. Clicking yeah. on the... And everybody's routine has stopped. You know, I've got an idea. If you want to save lives, what do we lose? About 50,000, 60,000 people a year in traffic accidents? Let's yeah. Let's lower yeah. the speed limit to 10 miles an hour. But we know by doing that, the economy would be destroyed. Exactly. So you always balance the economy and people's health. It's just done all the time. I want to remind everybody, if you have a question, email us uh, to this address, info at armedalabama.com. I've got it right over here, in, info at armedalabama.com. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, do that. We'll get it right over here. Adam, one thing I wanted to show is, not that I'm an expert on any of this, but like you, I'm a consumer of knowledge and have some common sense. I've heard people say, well, if you can't find alcohol to clean your hands, which I'm not so sure how essential that is, but you use whiskey, use that. Well, what people don't understand is, okay, here's beef eaters. It's 90 proof, but it's 45% alcohol, which you've got to have at least 70% alcohol to kill germs. So proof and alcohol content are completely different. Now, on the other hand, here's 190 proof rock good and it's 95 percent alcohol <laughs> and then just your plain old you get rubbing alcohol in three i think you get a 51 maybe a 71. now i use this to degrease guns with so i get the 91 percent but uh yeah if you're going if you're going to do with booze which in alabama would be pretty expensive but you better get that high proof yeah and yeah. you better get the high proof booze. the reason i said i don't know if we're going there or not yet uh there's a guy named Michael Osterholm. He's the uh, director of the University of Minnesota's Infectious Disease Department, a real expert. He said there's no evidence that this can be uh, spread by contact. He said if it is, it's from touching right near your tear ducts and the virus being sucked into your tear duct and the tears go down in your nasal pharynx. And that's how you get it. You put in, putting your finger in your mouth does not do it. And but he said coughing. He said it's worse than you think. You may cough. Hundred feet around may have the, the uh, virus in it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of tough. You know, you can't live your life in fear. That's the number one thing. And that's why we're gun owners. 
we know the government has no duty to protect us, take care of us, defend us. And they still don't. But they are using these heavy-handed tactics. You know, like they pulled a lot of this in 9-11 and kind of had us fooled. And, of course, as Ronald Reagan says, there's nothing so permanent as a temporary government program. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's what we've got. I mean, I can't imagine being... You know, imagine a guy having a small restaurant or maybe two restaurants, mortgage on it, eight employees, 12 employees. He has been put out of business by whatever arm of the government put him out of business. Uh, I yeah, think it's not the second. virus. Yeah, not, no, the not the virus. The virus. It's no. the government. No, if people want to take the chance to go out and they know, I hope people know what the chance is, take it. Yeah, if, 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 you're, if you're worried about the virus, if you're worried about contracting the virus, then don't go out, especially if sure. you're in that that if you're, uh, demographic. You're 75, if, immunosuppression, yeah, yeah, exactly. or whatever. If you're in that group, then you you should be absolutely quarantining yourself. Yeah, sure. And if we are not saying anything to otherwise. But if you're not in that group, all you have to do is use common sense things like wash your hands. Yeah. But wash them good and stay away from people. Yeah, you know. distance yourself or whatever, and limit uh, limit your exposure by you know limiting your shopping or whatever trips to the mall or what have you. But you know the the outrageous thing is, and listen, police are just doing what they're ordered to do. But we're releasing people from jail now. I can understand if it's a pretrial detainee and they just can't make the bond and they're otherwise not dangerous. Okay, but. They are release, wholesale releasing from jails and penitentiaries and yet have enough police force to break up church services. I mean, what? I, I, I don't think they've got the right to do it, frankly. And, but, you know, it's one of those things, until somebody stops them, they got, you can trace all these abuses of power back to Abraham Lincoln because he suspended habeas corpus when Congress is supposed to be able to do it. He declared martial law. He closed newspapers all by himself. And so when anybody does something outrageous, they just point back to Lincoln. And, you know, since he's kind of the, uh, you know, godsend of the country, uh, if he did it, it must be okay. You know, set precedence. Yeah. We're talking about martial law. I've heard that there's a Supreme Court case that, right after Lincoln, when Johnson was president, that says martial law cannot, that's where the military takes over. They're the ones issuing the orders. Go hung. You can't have martial law in the United States where the courts are operating. And while the courts aren't necessarily asking for people to come in, they're all have declared themselves open. So you can't have that. And, uh, but Pritchard has a voluntary, what is a voluntary curfew? I mean, the, the people you want to stay off the streets are the ones that ain't going to pay any attention to any voluntary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably the same person that had the trash cans printed, Pritchard County, Alabama. <laughs> Remember, they, instead of the Pritchard City, whatever it was, country, country, Pritchard, Mobile Country, Alabama. So speaking of uh, the economic impact of this virus, and that economic impact comes from the you know government closing businesses yep. and, and so forth and so on. So and listen, these, I speak for I've got a daughters that are in. So you know, well, will these same governments, not only the United States government but governments around the world, uh, will they propose sanction against China? Because China just even though they closed the wet uh, markets during. Oh, yeah, their, own, reopening. their own pandemic, tech pandemic, they just now reopened these wet markets. Yeah, you know, this is a country. So why, why continue this over and over again if they know this is where this virus, remember the these big, type of viruses come from? Remember the big hullabaloo? China was so wonderful, they built a thousand bed hospital in a week. Did any of y'all see any videos that smuggled out of that hospital? First of all, they had locks on the outside of the door, which was ominous. Leaking pipes. It was something like you would expect to be built in a week. But yeah, I'm with you. China should be made. First of all, China nationalized all of our American companies uh, when they took over the Chicoms. 
they uh, defaulted on all their debts owed to American citizens. Yeah, you're talking about back in what? The yeah, 40, 48. Yeah, 48. Yeah, yeah. 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 They threatened Taiwan weekly. You know, if you look at Taiwan, they controlled all of this without all these draconian measures. They had the, what you're talking about, people with high, highly susceptible. They didn't close businesses and do all that. I think they've only, I know they've had less than a thousand cases, yeah, yeah. and they're right next to them. But guess what? North Korea has had no cases. Yeah. <laughs> and they still have time to fire missiles at us. <laughs> so the, what I love is the media still quoting, Red China's done such a great job. Look, there are no new cases. Who believes that? Yeah. Yeah, probably because they took them out back. Oh, you know? yeah. And, yeah. You know, this is a country that killed 50 to 75 million people during their revolution. Their own people. Yeah, their own yeah. people. By, the, by some of the worst manner. But, but it would be interesting to see if, if, if they file some type of sanctions or lawsuits. There has been a lawsuit filed. Oh, really? Yeah, so, you know, maybe, maybe, that'll, that one. maybe that'll gain a little traction, you know. But, well, one of the things that this wet markets and reason they haven't been closed, they have their own lobby organizations, of course, within their government. It's like, you know, they eat dogs. There's a dog rodeo well, every year. Well, that's part the, of the, the, the animals right? that are sold within these wet yeah. markets. But the thing about it is, is one of the reasons why these wet markets have not been closed is because they're powerful and and also Communist Party leaders, they they like to go and buy, or they have people that go and buy items from these wet markets uh, for sexual prowess or oh, yeah, yeah. herbal remedies or whatever that come from these animals or whatever. And keep in mind, this is the same company, country that's pumping out all of the CO2 that everybody up here is having a heart attack. We've reduced ours. They've increased theirs, and yet nobody says anything. They're about not it. even worried about. They it. also major right, major staple is rice, which is the most water intensive crop that there is, and they don't have enough water there. It it it, it, it is a bandit nation. Bill Clinton is the one that transferred a bunch of technology to them, and now we're having to uh, you know defend ourselves from these. Yeah, people. but because it, back in the eighties. Um, one of the reasons that these wet markets got started is because the population could not feed itself. Yeah, right. This is something that the Chinese government did to make it okay that if, if it runs black, or scurries, kind of black market yeah, thing, if it they runs would... or scurries, that is, it is property of the Chinese government. Can you imagine going to market people here of China can eat it? Cats and dogs and raccoons and armadillos and all that for sale at, let's say, the flea market. I mean, that that's is, essentially what it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and we have people, is. and probably rightly so, that complain about, you know, have the warehousing production of chickens and all that. But man, that's like heaven compared to being in a wet market. Now, we got a lot of new gun owners. Yeah. Now, we can't show, of course, guns on YouTube. They'll, they'll shut us down immediately. But if you have any questions about your gun, what I would tell you is get your owner's manual. Sometimes you buy a gun, no owner's manual comes with it. You can always go to the manufacturer's websites, new or used, you've got to use when you can. Go to the manufacturer's website, get that owner's manual. First, make sure it's unloaded. Break it down, a field strip. I mean, I'm not talking about taking it down anymore than that, but understand how it works. And a brand new gun always needs a little lube. You know, a little goes a long way, but just understand how it works first. And if you're very careful and check a hundred times, you can dry fire most, most if you're buying a pistol, just to make sure, you know, you understand how that works. It's amazing how many untrained people successfully defend themselves. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, but it never hurts to get the training. So no, it never hurts. Bought it, if you're a new owner of a firearm, seek out a competent, certified instructor in your area. And, and get the training that you uh, you feel is necessary to defend yourself. So you're not your scared of your firearm. That's because exactly, if you're scared of it, you're going to be uh, you're not going to use it when you need to. Now, Adam, this is a question I don't know because I've I've got kind of a stockpile of ammunition. But are there any ammunition shortages in Mobile or Baldwin County? I haven't heard of any. I had I heard I some story heard. advertising. I won't mention it yeah. because they're a chain, but they were advertising it. Uh, but um, that, to me, it's like, you know, the same people buy plywood every hurricane. I think, you know, 
most of the time you get plywood, you cut it to fit your window. Yeah. One, uh, put it under your house or in your garage. It's expensive. Don't buy it every hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I don't well, know. Well, the thing about it is, is I always, you know, my wife and I, we always try to buy a five, five, six, nine millimeter. When yeah. We uh, buy it from the store or buy it online or whatever. But we've always we've made sure that we've had enough or, or what we felt like was enough on hand at, at home. But here, but I always want this to make whole sure time, like when you and I go shooting, I want to have 500 rounds of 5.56 or 1,000 so I don't have to go run to the store. Well, if you're a competent shooter, I mean, there was that you, one time, Judge, and, and you probably you remember go this, through it. I was going through eight, nine, yeah. ten thousand 10,000 rounds a sure. year. Sure. Uh, and that's that's been a long time ago. I don't do nothing like that yeah. now, but I still probably shoot 1,500 to yeah. 2,000 rounds a year. And I've told everybody this before. If, if you buy that much ammo, I personally like the uh, waterproof plastic, you know, kind of boat boxes because they have a nice oak seal rather than the metal ammo. But what I do is I put the ammo in there and then I get the uh, uh, moisture absorbers, I can't pronounce de desitants or whatever yeah, they go. Yeah. And I throw a couple of those in there because, you know, moisture and heat, but really moisture is the big enemy. If you can keep that dry, Hundred years from now, you can it. especially if you keep it in your house. Oh yeah, you know, keep whatever. keep it in your house. Mm -hmm. But this whole time, Judge, I should have been buying damn five by six. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, but you can use that. It. That is the new truth you in the world that we live in. You can take it toilet paper from somebody if you have You, you know, can trade it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is the biggest mystery to me because it's not like this is dysentery. No. or cholera. No, I mean it's like, and it's not like there's a lot of nose blowing and people. It's bizarre. Well, they feel like the world's going to end, so they all run out and buy toilet paper. Yeah. I guess they want to have shiny asses. When, <laughs> I, I don't know when, what it is. when it all goes. Hey, maybe they're going to roll somebody's yard. <laughs> you know, that's something that we ought to, that we ought to check out. But uh, hey, if you've bought a new gun, whether it be a pistol or revolver or shotgun or rifle, whatever, in the past few weeks, don't be embarrassed. You think, either, give us an email. Just say what you bought and why it took this i guess manufactured prices in my opinion but why it took this i'm glad, glad to have you welcome you but uh you know it's, i told none of the people in my whole law or my judge office were really gun people and uh but i always i finally got most of them to buy just a 22 because you know if a hurricane game level the city you need something to keep the the Visigoths away from the door, <laughs> and uh, you know, so at least I got it. And you know, you you have a let's say a Ruger, uh, the Ruger ten twenty two. You know, holds. I think you get a twenty five round uh, magazine. You know, you put twenty five rounds of long, long twenty two long rifle in somebody. Oh they yeah, yeah absolutely. And you know, a lot of people they're scary unless they use a gun a lot. That's all they can handle. That's fine. You don't have to go out and buy, uh, you know, a 10 millimeter or something or a 7.62. Yeah, I mean, you can get what you feel comfortable with. Sure. But Speaking uh, of, you had mentioned manufacturing crisis, along with this manufacturing crisis, of course, has come this bailout, if you will, a <laughs> bailout. And, um, and I, was, I had a hard time actually finding some statistics on it, uh, but just roughly here, um, if you factor in the amount of money, uh, the two point two trillion dollars, and I, I think I heard it somebody, started at one trillion. Yeah, yeah, and I think I heard actually, uh, uh, Lindsey Graham said it was actually two point three trillion dollars. It's no talent. <clears throat> but just at two point two trillion dollars, and of course you divide that by the number of eligible workers in the United States, and they give, I think it has an age bracket of the seventeen to. 66 or something like that so with that number of eligible workers in the united states that's 164 million six hundred thousand and that if you divide that 2.2 trillion which now is 2.3 but i got 2.2 <laughs> that gives uh the actual uh debt if you will because we're borrowing the money we don't yeah. have that kind of money we're, we're borrowing 27 27 trillion dollars yeah, yeah so just this alone adds thirteen thousand three hundred and sixty five dollars and seventy five cents to every man and woman out there who's 
you know, working age and employed. And that is criminal. It absolutely I is. I used to worry about that, but then when I decided the politicians were going to keep doing it, then I'm not going to worry that, hey, we need to you know, pay off the debt. We need, no. They're the it's, ones it's, They're the ones throwing it's, it's it away. Like, but the thing about it is, is, is we don't have that money. No, no, we have to, we have to, we have to borrow it. Well, who the hell are we going to borrow it for? We're going to buy it for China, yep. which is the whole reason yep. that we had to We're freaking borrow it in the first place. So it's it's crazy. But yeah, so we have, have to borrow it. We have to have an interest rate too. Half a percent interest still in your <coughs> oh, yeah, debt. Yeah. So, so we we have to pay interest rates on top of that. So oh, yeah, that money is is going to be doubled. The sad thing is, <coughs> I think Trump's instincts were correct in this thing now you know he says a lot of bs and all this but his instincts were correct until all the you know the medical establishment which is a lot of people in this country especially the public if you've never been to the national institutes of health in bethesda maryland you ought to go on a tour it employs like forty thousand people it's 300 something acres it's unbelievable that's where fauci is but once they keep working on him you know they finally <laughs> Finally broke him down, and uh, it's, it's you know it, it's just never let a crisis go to waste. That's exactly it, David Axelrod. Yeah, a friend of mine in North Carolina was telling me they've got city police blocking state highways to keep people out of the city. I mean, what? This is outrageous. Oh, let me correct myself. That's not David Axelrod. It's Rahm Emanuel. Yeah, Rahm Emanuel. Well, they're kind of, <coughs> kind of two peas in a pod there uh it's really something but uh but during this time mm -hmm. you know let's face it we got all the schools now and not every young person that goes to school is a law-abiding citizen a lot of them get out and get into mischief so you need to be a little more careful about your burglary precautions around your house because traditionally the crime burglary goes up in the summer yeah. when the kids are out of school yeah. so watch it right now and we've had several suspicious that I haven't seen on them, you know, come to the door, come up to the, which I've been, you know, amazed with kind of BS stories. Is this some address that doesn't exist? And, you know, obviously they're not afraid of coronavirus. They're not afraid of getting shot either. No. So, uh, you know, why should they be? Well, <clears throat> speaking of virus, we're talking about uh, mortality rates. And, and everybody is touting that this virus has a six or eight percent. Well, go, rate. Fig go figure. Italy has a ten percent. If you, you know, we don't know what the test, but let's just say based on tests and death, they have a ten percent mortality rate, while Switzerland has almost a one percent rate. Now, if you were sick or in a car accident, would you check into a hospital in Switzerland or Italy? It's just Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it has something to do with the well, healthcare in the end. Well, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the metrics at hand and the sampling base. Yeah. Uh, for, for my professional career, I'm a process engineer, quality engineer. Right. So I live my life based on metrics, right. numbers. That's how I ascertain um, a, a causal analysis on that, uh, on any subject that, uh, that I study or I get involved with. With that being said, uh, there's no sample base. This is not like the flu where every time you get sick, you go to the doctor, first thing they do, yeah, we, they swab you for the flu. We so may there have is a, 10 million people infected in the country. That's if a, that's the case, we've got a tenth of a percent. Uh, exactly. Mortality. And that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. So you, you can't go certainly by... happen in China. You can't go by these mortality yeah. rates um, that is being put forward because and try to compare that with yeah. the flu because the, base, the baseline is so broad with the flu in comparison to the coronavirus. Now, next year, a year from now, 18 months from now. When, when they with, have the five-minute test. Yes, and, and all this testing and being done, you're going to find that this this mortality rate of this virus is going to be extremely low versus what was put out, and it's going to be comparable to the flu. Now, I'm a layperson no, uh, as think. far as medical-wise, but I, I think it's just statistics on this mortality rate. It's just like the hurricane warnings. Years ago, Adam, they realized we got to be careful about crying wolf because when we issue a hurricane warning, we, we make all these dire predictions, people flee, businesses close, there's a lot of economic damages. And next time they won't believe us. Yes. 
They used to care about that. Now they don't seem to. They'll say with a straight face, we predicted the landfall on Hurricane Katrina, you know, 48 hours in advance. Well, they didn't because I've got all the tracks 48 hours in advance. It was at Mobile. Well, first it was Pensacola, then Mobile, then Gulfport, and it just moved down. I mean, they do a good job, but don't act like it's an exact science. Yeah. <clears throat> and don't overly, you know, with about the worst hurricane, as long as you're off the coast and you don't have trees that are going to fall on your house and you're not in a mobile home, you're not in much danger. Now, you may be inconvenienced because you can get the store and all that. That's something else. But they will have people, like I say, 40 miles inland terrified. Uh, it's just... Now, just, I will say something uh, like about this virus is, um, you know, news media is saying now, I think there's like a suspected 200,000 people is going to die from this virus. Um, and I, I I just don't see that. Don't heart so. disease heart disease is the number one killer in the United States. And I, I can't remember exactly what the numbers are. I should have put it in my notes here. But I think it's a neighborhood of uh, 164,000, 167,000. Uh, and I don't want to say, crew, a lot of the people that this virus is killing are people that were going to die in the next couple of years. Yeah, from, from that cement because, you know, they're Thank in that demographics. Yeah. Um, By the way, we've got a question in. Are we oh, going to yes. have any uh, classes after the virus resumes? Uh, I mean, after the virus is over? <laughs> kind of depends, you know. Now, if it's over, let's say August 1st, we'll probably wait till October 1st. <laughs> it's just a little hot. But, yeah, we'll try to, for some of you new people and some of you old people, because what Adam and I teach is, you know, combat fighting it is it is not olympic pistol shoot yeah it is how to defend yourself when somebody it comes up with a club or somebody tries to grab your purse or you know whatever it's yeah. up close and personal and we've had several people over the years come up to our class and, and we'll get about halfway through the class of course we're talking about combat training or, yeah. or, or defensive tactics and these are gun defensive tactics to teach you how to be a gun fighter so about halfway through the class, we've had several people over the years say, you know, raise your hand and say, you're actually talking about shooting people. <laughs> and I remember one in particular. You know, I think I, I'm I in the wrong was, class. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a gun safety class or how to shoot a gun. Uh, yes, we covered that, and it's very important to cover that. But I don't class. know many muggers that look like a target. No, exactly. Uh, 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 but more importantly, you have to be able to get your mind around uh, that situation and your mind around that's what why I'm going to do silhouettes have real faces yep. on them because uh, you know that's what you're going to be shooting well you have to and get you're your mind be around it. 10 feet or less probably right uh, so you got to just kind of think that way you got to think hey there's somebody three feet behind me you got to get into that mindset I know you know we in the south we like to be trusting you know, that's fine but you got to protect yourself and your family Correct. And uh, you got to do some common sense things like, you know, get your door secured at home and, you know, all the things we've talked about. But uh, well, this virus doesn't scare me. It's people's reaction. To absolutely. It is what bothers absolutely. me. Absolutely. And people that I know that are sane individuals have just lost their mind. I, 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 with I'm this. Just, I'm, like I see, you know, some of them do with hurricanes. Uh, it, it's just, I went, I. There's a great book by John Barry. He's written several uh, books, one about the Mi Great Mississippi Flood in 27 or whenever it was. But uh, he wrote a book called about the 1918 pandemic, probably about 15 years ago. Excellent book, John Barry, B-A-R-R-Y. But after I read that, I kind of got into it, and I went down to the archives of the Mobile Press, Press Register and started looking at the stories had a, they had streetcar drivers, I mean, a lot of streetcars that would die en route and somebody have to take over. And and yet the place, they did not have the kind of draconian conditions that we have. You know, it would, like I say, people were used to folks dying. And uh, I'm glad you don't have people dropping like that. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, you got to be a little realistic. You can't. You can't go to a 30% unemployment rate because we're afraid some people are going to get sick. Uh, you know, having had every kind of, you know, and, and we got to call it what it is, to the Chinese virus or 
communist Chinese virus. We call the German measles the German measles. We call Ebola virus, that's from Zaire, Marburg virus from Germany, the Spanish, West Nile virus, Spanish flu. Spanish flu. Yeah. We have all the, the, the uh, uh, what's the one with the tick? It's the same to the place in Connecticut, the, uh, you know, the uh, Lyme disease. Lyme disease. Lyme disease. Yeah. Yeah. We've got all of these that are there. Nobody's pegging it and saying discriminate against Chinese. But then again, not like the mayor of, uh, was it Milan, who you know, three weeks ago was saying, go up and hug a Chinese national to yeah. show you're not prejudiced. Yeah. Well, I don't know that anybody should have been getting hugged. But uh, Well, there were a lot of videos on YouTube with that. Yeah. That, you know. There's a great YouTube channel. is a dissident communi- a dissident woman in China, and she runs these, you know, I guess they're Snapchats, they're 40 seconds or less. And man, his people could suicide, jumping off buildings. People, you know, they welded people in their buildings to keep them quarantined. I mean, it's some barbaric things they did. And, um, you know, we, we just need to get away from China. And, you know, I don't think having $3 t-shirts at Walmart is worth the disruption that all this has caused. Or $99 uh, microwaves that only last a year. Yeah, that's what we've gotten out of China. Just a bunch of cheap junk. Well, speaking of cheap junk, um, the uh, of course, all the hospitals and, uh, and medical professionals, they need PPE. Mm-hmm. So to to try to get more, they're looking at different suppliers, of course. And some of those suppliers actually were uh, Chinese suppliers. Yeah. When they got them, they ordered them, and I mean millions of them, Judge. They couldn't even use them because they were so faulty. As far as the face masks and so forth, I, I, the, the, the seals weren't correct. They didn't seal. They didn't do anything. They have. Let's remember the poisonous uh, toothpaste a few years ago yeah. that the Chinese made. The melamine poison in dog food yeah. killed tens of thousands of dogs. Not, uh, the sheetrock. Yeah, the sheetrock that several hundred thousand homes are ruined. And that and, causes cancer. Yeah, the and sheet causes rock, cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, you know. The poli- and that was really big during Katrina. It really, yeah. Uh, but in the aftermath, I on just the missed it. We just added a room, and that room was about 2000, maybe 2001, 2000. and Katrina was five, so it was right around that time. And you know, insurance doesn't cover it. You, you, there were people bankrupted by that. Mm-hmm. All Chinese trash. They, you know, China has 20 times the rate of industrial accidents we have. So even if the uh, <laughs> The virus didn't escape from that lab. Maybe it was an accident, you know? Yeah, it's, accident release from the yeah, lab. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it is just bizarre. And you know, the other scary thing is, Adam, there's a whole class of the, I'll say Bloomberg's, the, the richest of the rich, that they think the population of the earth ought to be reduced to 500 million people. They think, you know, excess population, and uh, we've got to get rid of them. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying they have anything to do with this, but that's their ultimate goal. And uh, I don't know how they're planning on doing that other than a disease. Uh, it's really scary. And, of course, they're not among the people that are going to be yeah, cold, are they? Of course not. <laughs> It'll be. All right. We have any more? Uh, let's see. If, I'll check one more time to see if we have any more emails. Dennis Daniel has a comment in here. Well, hey, let's let Hey, Dennis, what's your comment? He says, um, what about the digital dollar in the bill? Thank oh, you, yeah. Dennis. I've got that in my notes, but I <laughs> haven't had a chance to get to it. I think they've been itching yes. to get rid of cash. Uh, and, you know, they'll appeal to law-abiding people or policing. You know, we've got so many drug barons that have all this money and blah, blah, blah. We need to get rid Listen. Keep your cash, yeah. And but I, I, that could be part uh, of it. One of my thoughts is they could track you. That's exactly they can track your purchase, purchases, what you're doing, and I'll, to a certain extent they can do that now. But um, if you remember a few years ago, um, matter of fact, Obama was president. It was a big push to centralize the internet. Yeah, because it was open, actually. Uh, yeah. You know, open a control to it. Open yeah, they source, made it so if one node got knocked out, you could... yes, exactly. Now. A flip, a switch can be flipped, and the internet could be turned off, just like in China. And so, exactly, uh, and that could be done in the U.S. as well. If they wanted to to turn off the internet for whatever country emergency or whatever, they could do that. So, because if, of some if, essential reason. My thing is, 
this has the capacity to do the same thing with a digital dollar to be able to flip a switch yep. and cancel all economic transaction, all purchases, and so you have no way to buy goods and services I think, right. without. I think if they had it right now, they would they would activate, let's say, grocery stores and drug stores. That's the only place you can spend money on. Yep, yep. And they could shut it down. And, you know, I'll get back to uh, the late, great President Grover Cleveland. Where is it enumerated in the Constitution that they have that power? It's not there. As, as Madison said, this is a government of limited and enumerated powers. And if they're not enumerated, not listed, they don't have the power. But they, you know, Well, to, to the next step, Bill Gates mentioned about the digital tattoo to be able to track everybody during this corona outbreak. And if you are identified as, as having the coronavirus, they can tell if you leave your quarantine yeah. area or whatever, and then you can go down and be arrested or whatever. This is one of the things that uh, Microsoft or Bill Gates has proposed. So, He's so, somebody so disconnected. From, yeah. If I proposed tattooing electronically every uh, convicted felon or everyone yeah. on probation, how many lawsuits would there be? Well, I can easily say, well, it, it, you know, the, the digital dollar can be turned off and you can't get it turned back on unless you get this digital tattoo where with on your phone yep. where, you know, you have any type of electronic transaction or a go to a website or go to a Facebook page or social media page. If that digital tattoo almost makes you want to do a Theodore Kaczynski yeah, and go live in a hut in and, Montana. And well you'll be associated with it and that's what's being proposed. Yeah. And so without this digital tattoo, you would not be able to buy and purchase goods or services. You're getting into revelation kind of well, materials. I, I, when you start when you when start you, doing that, I you know the number of the beast. Well, I don't want to sound like a coop, but but if, it's if, falling in line. But all you have to do is see what's being proposed. You have the digital dollar. You have this digital tattoo. Uh, it's uh, it can be kind of alarming sometimes if you think about it. It, it is it's, it's unbelievable. And then I love what the Democrats tried to shove in the bill. Airlines must be carbon neutral. Yeah. I mean, what? Okay, stop flying your private jets. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and you know, and having diversity on boards. You know, it, it was things. Well, the, the bill itself was bad enough, but then to throw on all of their wish lists. Let, let, let me talk real quick about uh, the airline industry. It behooves the airline industry to have the most efficient aircraft. Yep. Why? Because they fuel save money on fuel, fuel costs. Cost. Is that it makes the it major, cheaper for them. That's cost. what drives. Yep. That's what drives the efficiency of aircraft. So, and, and aircraft today versus aircraft even 20 years ago oh, yeah. is is uh, like kind of like different. everything like a refrigerator oh, a I'm thousand sure. times more more efficient efficient than especially with uh, you go from a low bypass to yep. a high bypass engine on uh, commercial airliners yep. and they are more powerful more powerful than previous generation of engines and they are orders of magnitude more efficient. The only problem with the aircraft industry is the TSA harassing people <laughs> at the gates, which that's I wonder whole, what, what, that's what they're doing. conversation. Okay, <laughs> they, they say flying is down 82%. Have we laid off any TSA employees? No. I don't think so. Yeah. And they're, they're the first people. Yeah. Now, there may be some good ones, and we all know, but most of them are the people that got a little well, power. That goes back to part of our original conversation when we opened this uh, session is the fact that people are ordering or saying that people should close these business down and, and these people not have jobs but yet these are all the ones they that are continuing to work yeah, yeah they're, they're guaranteed yeah. a job yeah <laughs> and so they take the Facebook or social media or whatever and say hey why aren't these jobs being shut down they yeah. ought to call law enforcement and drag them out by their collars or whatever I mean I have seen it I know you probably have seen it as well on social media um, it's easy to say that when you have a job. It is. It is. Absolutely. You know, well, what I would tell people is don't panic and, and try not to go to the grocery store every day. You know, I've got relatives that I try to get my wife, you know, we've got food here. We didn't have any food. We could live for a long time. But, you know, you go once or twice a week, like my mother's, not every day. Yeah. You know, there are yeah. people I know that go every day and buy prepared foods. And, yeah. Hey, that's fine, but not for now. 
but I mean, you make a good point. Uh, so when this whole thing started or whatever, and then there was a run on toilet paper for yeah. God's sakes. Uh, but then it was when Georgia Pacific and Choctaw County, I think it's Georgia Pacific, said they've got enough capacity to make all you need, and the businesses aren't buying it because yeah. they're shut down. Right. <laughs> but the thing about it was, it wasn't just toilet paper. It was beans. It was rice. It was all these kind of things. And of course, we uh, people you know call or text us or whatever, and they're like, "Well, what do you have? What do you, you know? What are, what are you going to get? Or That's kind do of you need to go confidential you, information? Yeah. Do you need well?" <laughs> It was like they were going to go to the store and they was wanting to know if we needed anything. Yeah. And so we were like, no, we're, we're, we're good. We've got you know when, when plenty they, of rice, plenty of beans, you know, in the crisis, plenty of ammo. We just <laughs> March 1st. shit out of toilet paper. <laughs> March 1st is kind of when it crumbled there, March 2nd. Of course, we had some of our senators that already knew what was going on. We're dumping stock, which uh, I think every one of them, I don't, this woman in Georgia, I don't care if she's Republican or not, did you hear her? She sidestepped every issue. She ought to be. She's only been in six weeks. She ought to yeah. resign tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that is just. And you know, by I hadn't even. I hadn't even looked to see what I've lost. No. I, well, I take that back. I you didn't look, look at the long term. I did look. You know, the first couple of weeks or whatever, or first week or whatever, and then like, okay, it's, you got to look at the long again. term. Yeah. But you know, it's not insider trading. It's even insider trading is with. You have information about a company that you have some confidential communication with on the board, an officer, and you get inside knowledge of a product coming. This is even worse. They're taking intelligence briefings. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, but, you know, what do you expect? Well, if, if you're interested in purchasing stocks, this has been a good time to do well, so. Well, if, if, you uh, if you have extra capital. You know what the, this shows me again? Dollar cost averaging. Which I finally, after I got out of my twenties, where you put two fifty a month into a let's say a standard four five hundred fund, whatever you can afford, and then it buys buys it when it's low, and it buys it when it's high, yeah. and it averages out, you know, and then you don't have to fill with the darn individual stocks where you tend to kind of. Get, I used to own wonderful stock. Remember uh, Russell Athletic, Russell Mills, yep, yep. big textile company. They were in uh, Alexander City, Alabama, I believe. And they they were darn near double every year, but after some of the free trade agreements, you know all those textile jobs went away. Which they were, you know, a lot of marginal but people held them, but a, they were good, decent jobs. But there was lots of small towns oh, across yeah. the U.S. Absolutely, in Monroe, yeah. remember? Yeah. All of those were destroyed. You know. Yeah. And those uh, jobs were outsourced to China. I don't have my paper before Vietnam but, and other countries. NAFTA let in all this Canadian timber owned by the Canadian government and since uh, January 2000 through the end of uh, last quarter of 2019 this is Mississippi timber prices sawmill price saw timber prices have decreased in real terms 73 percent in 20 years 73 percent down it's because all that Canadian timber and they pull all this you know we're environmentalists they're cutting their forests up there and of course what we did is ConAgra and all of our uh, corn growers here? We put the four little Mexican Mexicans out of business at a ten-acre uh, farm selling the corn, you know, for enchiladas and all. We destroyed their businesses. You can't, you know, you can't have us trading with countries like China that use slave labor to make goods, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah, yeah. to Trump's credit, he, he's he's the only one that has said that. Everybody else has been too scared to even raise the issue. Well, folks, what I'm going to say, if you found this interesting, want to do it, want us to do it some more, info at armedalabama.com. Just send us a comment and say, hey, wasted my time, or hey, uh, <laughs> wish I'd known about it. I got in halfway through or whatever, and we'll we'll schedule these. We'll, we'll get some of the kinks. Uh, yeah, this being our first one, so we'll, we'll definitely yeah. be able yeah, to uh, get some. And but I think this will be able to play it back on YouTube and oh, Facebook, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, they'll be able to play it back. So you can watch it in its entirety. Weeks later. or whatever yeah, like that. Yeah. And I'll put some, uh, if I can remember, links to some pretty good sources that are non-hysterical that people can yeah. watch. And I think you and I both have been chomping at the bit the last I, I, I just be able trying, to, I've been thinking it'll pass, try to contain yourself. Yeah, yeah. And it just gets so more much, outrageous. So again. much misinformation. Uh, and, and, that's the thing. and the press that ought to act 
as a, you know, be critical of everything going on, mm -hmm. they act like they are Pravda for you know kind of the government line. I mean, it, it is. Well, and I think you know, I'm trying to think. I was like, what is the why here? What is the why with all this? What is what's the causality of, of all this? I don't know it's just is, is it, or what? Well, I think we have seen over, I don't know, the last three years or more with, with Trump's presidency that the media and the left has absolutely just thrown everything at the wall to yeah. try to make something stick. And I think I think this thing kind of grew legs. Yeah. And They thought they could use it on it, him. I think so. I think they thought they could use it on him. It was like Cuomo, you know, they want to run him for president, screaming about ventilators. Does he understand if you have ten thousand ventilators, where where are the ventilator techs coming from? Exactly. It's so like you can't, use them. you can't open a hospital and just fill it with people without you know RNs and and AIDS and all those people. Well, you got to have. It's, he it's come a, out and stated that uh, what that he weren't getting any from the from the youth. Oh from yeah, the it's, from the government. If any place deserves a, a, a military quarantine. Cordon Sanitaire, they call it. It's New York City. And yet to suggest that, that's where a third of the cases are. Yeah, if you escape from New York. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's where Cuomo, they ought to have the Constantino wire. And yeah, well, Cuomo's no snake plus man. He, he, to me, he looks like a thug. <laughs> An absolute thug. And then, of course, he's got his brother running well, ahead of him. Yeah. It, Who's it, just it, contracted it. Oh, the what Cuomo. a shame. What a shame. It's kind of a status symbol to contract it, you know? <laughs> I mean, every oh, day. I mean, well, your some, social media followers jump. I know. You know it's, so, it's some Hollywood starlet or somebody oh, yeah. saying that they have it. So, uh, yeah. and, and for all. Nobody. I had a gallbladder at one time. Nobody you know, <laughs> congratulated me for that. <laughs> you know? Well, the thing about it is, is, for the most part, those cases are, the symptoms are mild. Yeah. Now, I will say this about the virus. Um, when you look at it on, before us, other pathogens and other virus. One thing it is about this virus, uh, in relation to like the flu and other viruses, um, <clears throat> it for a certain percentage of people who contract the virus, uh, their metabolism, not metabolism, excuse me, their immune system it goes into a cytokine storm. Exactly. That's what happened in the nineteen eighteen flu. Yeah. It tends to be the people eighteen through forty. Well, exactly, their body, their T cells attack the cells within the body that has a that has a virus. And it kills whatever organ. So, yeah. so most of the people, the fatalities that are young, they have died from uh, from cardiomyopathy, yeah. and not necessarily from the virus itself. And you know, everybody talks about ventilators. I just finished my uh, durable power of return, medical power. I don't want to be on a ventilator. You know, you have to be put in a medically induced coma. I don't want to be on. If, if it's my time to go, fine. But yeah. don't hook me up to a damn ventilator, especially where they don't have a qualified person running it, you know? <laughs> but you have to share it with them. That's a horrible thing. <laughs> if y'all have ever seen anybody on a ventilator, you stay in it more than a week or two, then they give you a tracheotomy to run. It, it, it's just a horrible thing. Yeah. So no, no ventilators. Uh, and by the way, saunas don't help with this either. <laughs> so that, you know, you can't, if you sucked in 180 degree air into your lungs, it'd kill you. You just can't do that with a sauna because it cools down, but it just, there's so much misinformation, but folks, that's it for tonight, and hope you enjoyed it, and really send us comments, so we'll know whether we are, ought to do this. Yeah, again. we definitely want to do this again, so we look forward to hearing your comments, yeah. so uh, take care, keep your powder dry, and uh, we'll do this <laughs> the again. Faith. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Good night, Farm Bell Bell.